Genesis chapter 1, if you're able, stand with us please for the reading of God's word. Genesis chapter 1. I want to read the very first verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Then I want to read from Psalm 8. Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we're in need of thy help today. Accomplish your purpose through this message. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. You may be seated. The Coleman family from Indianapolis had originally thought of going to Florida for vacation last summer, but some of the older relatives thought it a little far, so they settled on Branson, Missouri, just a little over seven hours from their home. They rented a van, and 11 of them made the trip together. They got to Branson, enjoyed their first night. The next day, they they all bought tickets for a boat ride on the famous Ride the Ducks and uh, a hilarious ride through the city on an open-air vehicle that can also float like a boat. And you remember the story. They all bought tickets for the ride, but on the lake last July 19th, a storm came up and the boat went to the bottom. And of the 11 tickets the Coleman's bought, only two of them are alive to tell about it, nine funerals in one family from a vacation they had planned for and thought about and saved for. And for the Coleman family, a vacation became a nightmare. Over and over in our world where newsprint has turned to digital and news travels so quick, we hear of tragedies, accidents and fires and terrorism. And um, it becomes real close to home then when cancer strikes our loved ones, or when a family in our family begins to fall apart, or when we lose our job, or our home burns down, we find ourselves often asking why. And the songs we sing in our hymnals, um, they, um, they talk about, I don't worry about tomorrow, I just live from day to day. <laughs> and they talk about a tent or a cottage, why should I care? But the reality is, every one of us, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of us have asked the question why. I mean, even if you haven't asked it verbally, in your mind you've wondered, now why would God allow that? And uh, why would God do that? And I, I know I've asked that. And if you feel like that that's wrong or that I am uh, a man of no faith because I ask that, then I ask your forgiveness. But I, I do believe that even if you don't even ask the three-letter word question, I think that most of us who live in life have asked why. We wrestle with the unfair, we struggle with the unthinkable, and we despair at times over the tragic and I have pondered some of this and have nothing new to say. And I certainly have nothing new to write. The book title was a good one that someone wrote, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. I wish I had thought of that title. I, I could pay off the parking lot now and the building fund. But I doubt my answers would be any different than his answers. We really, we just don't know. We don't know why. 
Um, and maybe we never will. Maybe we never will in this life. And I honestly believe in the next life. I, I just honestly don't even know that the question will come up that plagues your mind. But if it does come up, then we can talk it over in the by and by and we'll understand why. Some of it can be boiled down to simply this, the world God created and the world Satan created. Our text, Genesis 1.1, is the most read verse in all of the Bible. I would not have guessed that. I always thought that maybe John 3.16 was. It sure is a good one, and I love to quote it. In fact, I try to quote it often. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But I learned that the most read verse in all the Bible is actually Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And it's likely the most read verse because anyone around the world, be they Muslim or Buddhist or atheist or... Turn this on. I noticed it was really low. I think Pastor Schaefer used it last. <laughs> Not really. I think we're good. I'll just stay here behind the uh, mic. Um, these people around the world who want to know about Christianity, maybe a Gideon Bible in a hotel, they're going to pick up the Bible, and where do you start reading? You start reading page 1, verse 1. What a great place, really, to start in the beginning God. And one said about this verse, the golden key to the entire Bible is hanging right on the front door. In the beginning, God. So let's look at the world God created. First of all, God created a world that was good. Over and over, as you read through the first pages of the book of the, the first book of the Bible, you will read how he created this and he created that. And um, verse, uh, I'm looking here at verse 12, you know. And God saw that it was good. And uh, you look over at verse 18. He creates uh, the day and uh, the night and divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And anybody who's ever watched a sunset and a sunrise, and it happens every day, Every single day, God said it was good. And do you look down here? He created great whales, verse 21. And every living creature, every winged fowl, and God saw that it was good. Verse 25, uh, the beast of the earth, the cattle, the creeping things, God saw that it was good. And... So all of these things, God created a world that was good. You know, I don't know just how long Adam and Eve lived in a good world. I, I personally think it was a while, a long time, where disease was not a thing, where no storms threatened, where the rose had no thorn, where nothing bad was ever posted on Facebook. God created a world that was good. I noticed, secondly, God created a world that was alive, there were no funeral homes in the beginning of Genesis. There were no deaths recorded. The world that God created didn't have Cain killing his brother Abel. God created a world that was alive. I noticed thirdly that God created a world that was safe. I woke up at about 2 a.m. the other morning to a clanging on the front porch. It was a bear right outside our bedroom window. He stayed there a while and feasted on bird seed that I had stored there. He enjoyed it very much. In fact, he came back about an hour later. I took several pictures. I kind of enjoyed it. My wife 
is quite upset about it to this moment. And she has done all sorts of things to ensure that the bear does not come back, even to the point I come home the other day, she has some kind of speaker wire running through the front window and a speaker on the front porch, and she's playing gospel music. <laughs> as if the bear does not like gospel music. In the safe world that God created, I could have went out on the front porch, visited with the bear, stroked his fur, and fed him an apple. I believe that with all of my heart. Fourthly, I believe God created a world that was love. He didn't, you know, he didn't need us. He was not lonely. Uh, it almost appears that God was lonely, that he creates man. I've thought about that, but really he wasn't lonely. He did not need to feed his ego. Do you know why he created us? Because he loved us. He created us out of his great love because from the foundations of the world. No, I don't understand that. You don't understand it. I don't understand a lot of things. But Ephesians 1.4 says, He hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Jeremiah 31.3, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. And he wanted a beautiful home for us to live in that was, that was good. From the study of scriptures, God created us because he loved us, because he just wanted to, and he's allowed. He doesn't need any other reason. Queen Elizabeth doesn't go around all day asking permission to do this or do that. And, and she's just a 93-year-old woman who is going to die the same way all of us are going to die and she will uh, she's just just like you and just like me she she's just a person I'm talking about the king of kings and the lord of lords he doesn't ask to ask anybody permission and he doesn't have to have a lot of reasons that you understand he loved us from everlasting he created us out of his great love because he wanted to. That's the world God created. And then there is the world Satan created. It happened in an instant. I don't understand all of this either. I don't understand this at all except that evil has always existed just as good has always existed. God wasn't about robotics he didn't create us from the foundation of the world to be robots like I saw in Williamsport Hospital just the other day visiting Fred Phillips and, you know, I come around the corner and there's this robot moving down the hallway with a blinking light. Or I was in Giant. The Lutzes are at Mount of Blessing Camp, but Tim works in the um, meat department over at Giant. And I went into Giant uh, just a few weeks ago. How many have been in Giant and seen the new robot? I'm telling you what. I hate to tell you, I don't know if I want to go back in Giant. That was a spooky robot. It was as tall as I am, I believe. Have you seen that? Has anybody else seen that robot? And it, and it moves through the aisles. It's about as tall as me. It is very scary. Who wants to be scared when you go for groceries? And... Um, I want to tell you, God wasn't about robotics. He could have programmed you to love him. But that's not the man God wanted. We just read about it in Psalm 8. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Verse 4, the son of man that thou visitest him. You're just a little lower than the angels crowned with glory and honor to give you dominion. God wasn't creating a robot to roll down the hospital aisle or down the aisle, down the bread aisle at Giant Market saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. God wasn't about creating robots. God was not creating a chess piece in a cosmic game. We are not a pawn. Adam and Eve, the first people, did the unthinkable 
They were created with the ability to choose just as you were created with the ability to choose. A great freedom that God gave every one of us, a freedom of our own will. Adam and Eve, the first people, did the unthinkable, ushered in a world that Satan wanted with a sinful choice. I really wrestle with understanding how sin could enter such a good place and wreck such a good plan. I certainly don't wrestle alone. Augustine, St. Augustine said, I sought whence evil comes and there is no solution. Sin is present in human history and there is no way to ignore it. And we, great, we make great attempts in our modern world to explain it away as a flaw or a weakness or a mistake or a necessary consequence of an inadequate social structure. All of the presidential candidates who will stand on any debate floor in this coming year will talk about how we need to, we need to provide more education, we need to pro provide better health care, we need to provide a better housing, we need to provide this, and if we do this and we do this, this is the reason that our society is crumbling because people do not have the means for basic We really wrestle with this. Oh, but it's much more than that. There is a kingdom of light and there is a kingdom of darkness. And as one said, sin is an abuse of the freedom that God gives to created persons so that they are capable of loving him and loving one another. God has given you the freedom to make it you capable of loving God and loving people but sin is an abuse of that freedom. Whence and why and what for, I do not know, but Adam and Eve chose sin, and we now live in a small sense. We live in the world Satan created. And what a different world it is compared to that world that God called good. First of all, while God created a world that was good, Satan created a world that was evil. This is a twisted, vile place where addictions seek to control their victims and where little children cry themselves to sleep. Where our pastors visited the bedside of two individuals this week who attempted to take their own life. We pray for them and support them and pray that God will bring them to the light that there is hope with him. Well, God created a world of life. Satan created a world of death. The funeral business has always interested me, and you guessed that, that I am such a dead, dry, boring person. I'll let you know my first job was working for Cronrath's funeral home. Parking the cars, doing other things, but it's not all that interesting at all when it's people you love. People I have pastored, people like we have had to say goodbye to here in the last years, friends and family, facts are I hate death. We call it the dying process, standing by the bedside watching for the last breath. I've been there for some terrible deaths and I hate it. This is the world that Satan created. Thirdly, while God created a world that was safe, Satan created a world that was full of hurt. We see the faces of little children abused and violated. It's a hurt that is not fair. I hear the cries of anguish from the mother holding her child in her arms, victim of war. It's not fair. This is the world that Satan created and it's not fair. It's full of hurt. Fourthly, while God created a world of love, Satan, Satan created a world of hate. James chapter 1 verse 15, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. 
when a family like the Coleman family goes on vacation and comes home to nine funerals, when whatever you are wrestling with that strikes you as unfair, when those few things, and I've not been through anything compared to what you've been through, but the devil always makes it personal. To that person who's here today who has lost a loved one in tragedy, or to that person who you missed last Sunday and nobody called to say that you were missed. It doesn't matter what it is. The devil is all about making it hurt. And the thing in your life that you never understand, the thing that sometimes you have to ask, where was God? The question is, not why did God do this or why did God allow this or why, why, why. The question is really that you're going to have to really come to grips with is what world are you going to choose to live in? There is someone listening today who is still part of Satan's world. You've never given your heart to Jesus. You've never asked him to forgive you of those sins. You've never followed him as a true believer. You're still bound to the doom that Satan's world spells. It's like a Halloween haunted house except it's real and will never end and you're part of that world. I've been in very few haunted houses. Uh, my parents, of course, never took us to the carnival. We were so abused, you know. They just thought it wasn't an influence they wanted in our life, and I thank God for it. I've never missed it, never been to one except one time. When we went to Grandma's house... And my great-grandpa Joe gave Grandma money to take us to the carnival. She knew that we were not allowed to go to the carnival. Uh, but, she thought, so she, but she didn't know what she should do because Grandpa Joe had given us money for the carnival. And so she, um, she gave us a choice about whether we wanted to go to the carnival or whether we wanted to go to the, I forget what else. But we wanted to go to the carnival. We'd never been to the carnival. My mother and father still have not forgiven my grandmother I know. She took us to the carnival and we went to the haunted house. I'm telling you, I'm not into the haunted houses. I always thought that here at the church, if we did want to pay off our building fund, we could have a haunted house in the basement of the Bates Center, the old church. If you want to see something that's, well, I don't believe in it being haunted, but I'm just saying, if you want to see something that'll scare you, you just go down there. Watch for the snakes. You just go down into the basement of the Bates Center. We don't even lock the door because there's no reason to ever lock it. Nobody would be brave enough to go down there. There's nothing to steal. But I won't tell you, it's not at all funny when your life is a haunted house, out of control. You think it's the end thing. You think it satisfies you. You think you've got to fit in and keep up. But you're part of the wrong world. And you need to switch sides. When you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, you become part of the world that God created. And you say, whoa, whoa. What about saved people who go through tragedy? Save people who die of cancer. People who have lived for God all of their life. And their kids break their heart. Well, you don't understand, and, and I don't understand for sure, but I'm just proposing to you that, that we're traveling through Satan's world, but we are not home yet. Our world is the world God created. For the sinner, this is the best world they'll ever live in. For the saint, it's all up from here. Everything will be okay in the end, and if it's not okay, it's not the end yet. 
Those are not just cliches, that's truth. And I've heard Brother Statler mention different times of his father-in-law, Regina's father, Brother Agin, was dying. He was good friends with his doctor. The family was in the hallway feeling that they should, the doctor should talk to their dad. He went in, he came out. The doctor was moved upon, and he said, uh, I told Brother Agin, and I guess the doctor even called him Brother Agin. He had such confidence in him. He said, I, I told Brother Agin we're losing ground. And Brother Agin looked up at me and said, Oh, doctor, we're not losing ground. We're gaining ground. Let me tell you, it's up from here. Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. The songwriter said this is my father's world. Well to a degree it is. It's hard to erase his fingerprint off the face of the globe. I was traveling through this week through some of the most beautiful of God's creation it just leaves you in awe and to realize that this is still a marred place because of sin. This is just his footstool. For just a little while, it has become the world Satan created with war and terror and murder and suicide and addictions and divorce and funerals and cancer and earthquakes and storms. But facts are the day I knelt and confessed my sins to Jesus and he adopted me into his family, I became part of a whole new world, a world that God created where old things are passed away and all things are become new. And so, while I'm moving through this world so marred by Satan, I'm moving every mile closer to the world that God created. And already that world has been created in my own heart. There's no better way to live, shall we stand together? The musicians are coming. I want them to play. In fact, I want us to sing. I want us to sing a verse of how great thou art. As we close the service today, and I'm praising him today not only for his creation, but what, for he's done, what he's done in our hearts. That we realize that we may cry, we may weep, we may ask the question why, the most important question is, what world am I living in? When I realize I'm living in a world because of his grace that he created, and I'm moving there, I can face whatever life is throwing at me for the same God who created the universe has redeemed me by his precious blood. Praise his precious name. I'd like to sing verse 3. Let's sing it together. And when I think that God, his son not spared, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bear, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul. today and you need to pray you can come to this altar you can reach out if you're online to someone who is ready to pray with you and I would urge you to bring your burden to the Lord bring your need to the Lord bring your life to the Lord if you need to be saved
you need to be sanctified holy, if you need to be filled with His Spirit, come to this altar. We'd be delighted to pray with you before we go home today. Praise the Lord. Oh, how He wants to move you out of the world that Satan created into the world that God created. Let's sing verse 1. Oh, Lord, my God, when I am lost, Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe is great. Then sings my soul.